Have you seen all the division in the land? Anything that can be divided seems like it's been divided. Political divisions, racial divisions, economic divisions, idea, families are being divided, education's being divided. Where is their hope? Well, guess what? There's hope on the Gulf Coast because pastors from different churches, different denominations, diff different races, ethnic groups coming together for unity in the community. Listen, one of the last places to have a uh, racial riot was a Scambia County high school right in Scambia County. And these pastors right in the heart of that are coming together to unify and say, listen, we have a new story for our future. Unity's beginning in the church. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here this morning, this afternoon, you know, wherever you're watching us. And I'm excited about uh, talking with Pastor Ron Lentini of Myrtle Grove Baptist Church. Also, Dr. James uh, Miller from Warrington uh, Baptist Church in uh, uh, Warrington, Florida. And also, Dr. Uh, uh, Raleigh Richardson from uh, United, Myrtle Grove United Methodist Church. They're just brothers in the Lord, you know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> naming names. I'm Greg Lancaster, VFN TV. You know? <laughs> well, I'm just excited to have you here and to um, just hear your hearts, you know, and uh, Pastor Ron, can you talk to us a little bit about what we're talking about here in regards, because I know that God began to birth something in your heart and just kind of give us a breakdown, if you would, of, of what's, what's God doing on the Gulf Coast. There is a uh, new thing that the Lord is doing, mm -hmm. a movement that is uh, undoubtedly of God. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2016, mm -hmm. during the uh, very heated presidential uh, race right. at that time, with, uh, with everything that was going on across the country in Ferguson, mm -hmm. uh, in Baltimore, mm -hmm. it really caught my attention. The, uh, the accelerated uh, hatred and division racially, culturally, that was taking place across the nation. Mm -hmm. And it was during that time, after the police shooting out in Dallas. Yes, it was like it was a five police officers that were shot were gunned down. down the street. While uh, people were having a, a, a First Amendment march yes. for the rights to be able to deal with stuff. Somebody kind of hijacked the whole thing and, and it yeah. was terrible, it was tragic. The Lord spoke to my heart uh, in that very weekend that that had occurred. Uh, being raised in Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, in my teenage years during the 1960s, I witnessed the uh, racial riots that were taking place in the city where I grew up mm -hmm. uh, there in Detroit. And I had memories of the uh, tension, the hatred that was so uh, prevalent at that time. And I thought to myself, this can't be happening again. Right. Uh, but the division that was taking place uh, was very real. Mm -hmm. And it was that morning that I called my dear friend right here, uh, Dr. James Miller. And I, uh, our churches had been meeting together uh, over the years. Uh, uh, we had developed a friendship. Mm -hmm. And I said, Pastor James, uh, we've got to do something, mm -hmm. you know, for our kids, yes. uh, the youth of our, our churches. So we decided that next day was Sunday mm -hmm. that we would bring our churches together to begin talking about, you know, what was going on there and the unity that we have right. uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord, through the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that began, that was like a spark that began a chain of events that, uh, that started occurring uh, as we reached out to other pastors in the Myrtle Grove, Warrington area mm -hmm. and talked about coming together to build bridges at a time where there was so much uh, division. One thing led to another. Uh, we found that more churches were coming on board with the idea of maybe getting together uh, at various venues and talking about the gospel of Christ that unites us right. across racial, cultural, and even denominational lines. Right. Before we knew it, there were seven churches mm -hmm. of a variety of different denominations, mm -hmm. uh, cultural, racial groups in our area, mm -hmm. uh, Filipino, Vietnamese, Hispanic, mm -hmm. African-American, mm -hmm. Caucasian believers that uh, felt just uh, you know the same way we did in our heart that there's something terribly wrong right. and uh, that the body of Christ, that we have the answer, the only answer mm -hmm. that can bring real unity, right. uh, not only reconcile us to our God, the God and creator you know, of the universe, Jesus. but also to help us reconcile across lines of, of culture and race and, um, and allow us to become family right. uh, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross and our faith in him. So that, um, and that's you know, what that, that's what you know. That's yeah. what Jesus um, asked, prayed for the Father for about two thousand plus years ago. Was 
Father, I pray that they would be unified, that they would be one as we are one, us and them, them and us, that, that the whole world will know that you love them as much as you love me, Jesus. Amen. So this unity supernaturally says, God loves me as much as he loves Jesus. Isn't that awesome? That's just there's awesome. an evangelistic mm-hmm. component mm-hmm. to that prayer that Jesus yeah. prayed. If you recall in that verse it says, Father, I pray that they may be one as we are one. Mm -hmm. And here's the evangelistic component. Right. That the world will know. Correct. Through their love for each other that you sent me. In other words, the power of of our love, like in the book of Acts, Mm -hmm. in the early chapters there in the book of Acts, uh, people were being added to the church daily Mm -hmm. for those who believe. And the thing that caught their attention, they never saw a demonstration of love like there was there in that uh, Acts Right. Yeah, in the infancy yes. church, mm-hmm. in the book of Acts. In the same way, it, it struck me in my mind that the reason why the church has lost its prophetic voice mm-hmm. is because the body of Christ, with few exceptions, right. of course, are just as divided. It's the most divided moment in America at 11 o'clock yeah, on Sunday people morning. In the world. Yes. So lost people out right. there have been right. looking at the church and saying, why should we listen to your message? Right. You're, you're as divided Especially as this kids. generation because they yeah. don't have all the bondage of past generation mindsets. That's it. The millennials, yeah. the millennial generation and Generation Z. I mean, they got some issues now. I'm not talking about, but in regards yeah. to the historical uh, mindsets. They're looking yeah. right now at the church mm-hmm. and saying, you know, you know, what's the, you know, what is their, they're, they're seeing no demonstration of power. Right. I think to regain a prophetic voice, mm-hmm. the vision that God's given me, is that we need to unite around the gospel. We have many right. differences beyond the gospel between Methodist, Baptist, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or independent churches, Pentecostal. There mm-hmm. may be theological issues outside the gospel we disagree on. But to become a believer, you have to believe right. in the gospel. Right. And all, every true uh, church of whatever denominational stripe have to arrive at the death burial and resurrection of the eternal Son of God, right. who's coming again to judge the yes. living and the dead, yeah. the only way to the Father, right. and the only way for us to truly be reconciled. So, That's, I, that's so awesome. Yeah. I think if you want a church building program, start loving everybody. It's cheaper to love than to build <laughs> yeah. all these programs. Dr. Miller, talk to us. You know, I'm so honored to have you on set as well, and you're the, you know, you're not only a pastor, but you're also was the chief of police of Foley, Alabama, and you were the first African American chief of police, which is a great friend of mine too. Is um, Doctor uh, is, um, David Alexander was the first African American chief of police of Pensacola. I personally think it should have went longer. I don't know what happened there. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. But I know this is your heart too. We've talked. So talk to us, you know, Doctor Miller, about about your heart in this and what, how this all came about for you. Well. Yes, it is. And, and when Ron first called me, uh, if it had a wow moment, mm-hmm. when something something happened that you knew was real. And when he began to tell me his heart and, and his heart touched my heart. And, and, and basically here we are because uh, we knew that, that, that God, that, that this was about God. Yeah. This was about God. This was, this was much larger than, than we were. And we, we both left that uh, that that moment mm-hmm. with with, uh, with with the prayer mm-hmm. that God would take it farther. That uh, that not, is watching this and this exactly, is plan, right? Uh, yeah. Not, not knowing that uh, yeah. that we're gonna end up at this point and that that I was gonna meet this person to my right. to my to my right, my, mm-hmm. my Alabama mm-hmm. brother here. That, yeah. Uh, <laughs> refused to realize that all of it is still number yeah. one, but Christ <laughs> is number one all of our lives. But the right. one thing that we knew mm-hmm. that in, in in order for man to get together up there, we got to get together down here. Correct. And um and 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 we thought that if um if we would Take it to the people, mm-hmm. and that, and, and when the people see us mm-hmm. getting along, mm-hmm. right. um, uh, moving in the in the same direction, uh-huh. then maybe we could convince them. Because normally, when you when you see the church these days, you, you see the visitors, yes, uh, in one way or another. Sad to say, but it is out there, right? And uh, mm-hmm. and 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 something has to bring us together. Yes, but the one thing we we might we might uh, not agree. Um, our philosophies might be different. Right. Our, our way of lives might be different. But one thing we must agree on, and that is uh, the Son of God is Jesus Christ, and Amen. He is the Messiah of this world. Yes. And uh, we got to we got to come together. We we got mm-hmm. to let them know that we believe. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and when you look at at us, and I say us as the, as the, the leaders of the church, right, right. Um, if, if they see us divided, right, then what's going to bring them together? Nothing uh, else. You, uh, you're and right. Then, and then shortly we, we got in touch with uh, uh, Brother Riley here, and 
and he bought in. He had his wild moment, and right. <laughs> and and then when the three of us finally got together, right, right. we knew uh, uh, that we could do this. Right, right. And and, I, and I'm, I'm gonna pull the mic a little bit closer right now that uh, that we can do this. Yes, I can't do it. You oh, yeah. can't do it, but we can. Yes, you know, we can. We can. We can. Uh, we can bridge a gap here, uh, and and we can. And I thank God that we are able to tell our children about the things that use to separate us. Right. But we're not telling them about the thing that is separating us now. Right. Uh, hopefully, they will never have to do anything but watch the, the films that we give them about right. the past because our future is much different. They, they can learn to do as uh, Dr. King said. Yes. We'll, 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 we'll be able to walk together, white, black, black blue, yeah. whatever it is. Right. Uh, and, I've uh, been to the mountaintop. Together, top. Come yeah. together. Uh, yeah. And we're doing that. And we're doing that denomination. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, we want to keep money out of it. Right. We know money destroys, yeah. and money can destroy us totally. Yes. So this is not a money thing. It's, right. it's, it's not about raising money. It's, it's, a, it's not about getting one or two of us on top of everyone else. It's right. just about churches working together yeah. with our common goal. That is so awesome. We're going to go to break. We're going to come, we're going to come back in just a moment. This is so exciting. You want to be a part of this. If you're a pastor and you're wondering what you need to do, Pray, but begin to seek unity in Christ and watch God touch your community. Unity in the community doesn't just start here. It could be all over the United States. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win, you'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take and quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And look what they're doing, they're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you, you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we wanna bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. Welcome, welcome back. Unity in the community. We're talking about it on the Gulf Coast, but the truth is you can have it in your own community if you listen to what God is doing amongst these pastors in the church on the Gulf Coast. You know, we just, I just speaking to uh, Dr. James Miller of First Baptist Church, First Baptist Church in Warrington, uh, uh, Florida, but also we want to hear about, you know, what's happening with Pastor Raleigh Richardson of Murder Grove United Methodist, and uh, that you too have been a, a stable, your church has been a stable church in, in the community there, there as well. So talk to us, what got you involved in, in wanting to step outside your walls, because pastors are, all pastors are very busy, you know, and, it, and it's, it's a big deal to step outside of all the demands that a pastor has. To do it. So talk to us what happened. And so as my, my brother in Christ, Dr. Miller, had said, he had that wow moment. And I, and I, I did have that wow moment in which I realized that the, the Holy Spirit had spoke to my heart and said, this is, this is of God and this is what I want you to be involved in. So I've been at Myrtle Grove uh, now in that community for 11 years. And the first two or three years of being a pastor there, I was looking for a way to get the church connected. And we were been involved in mission and ministry in the community, but really getting our people uh, in, in in the pews doing ministry outside of the doors of the church and connecting with the needs in, uh, of the community. And so I had been involved in a few other programs, but nothing that that I, I felt was really of God or called of God, and right. the few things I were involved in, of course, fail. Right. Uh, but when I got a telephone call from uh, Pastor Ron, and he began to share his vision of what we could do as the body of Christ that we as we come together, and I've always believed that there's more that unites us than it is that divides us. Yes. And that if we focus in on one message, and that is the message of the cross. Right. That all can come to know Christ and be right. saved, uh, and and allow the Holy Spirit to live and work through us, becoming the body of Christ and becoming one, as we've already shared in John's Gospel, seventeenth chapter, where mm -hmm. Jesus did pray that we would be one, 
and, and that that our love for one another then would make a difference in the community. And so I immediately wanted to be a part of that and, and right. was very appreciative that God included me in this vision. Right. And then just to have the opportunity to uh, meet two great men of God yes. and uh, to come together. Our churches now gather for worship services two or three times a year. Praise we God. rotate through That's different awesome. churches. We have a service coming up at Dr. Miller's church, I believe, uh, March, uh, March the 3rd, right. uh, in which churches will come together sort of as a rally. Uh, Pastor Ron will share more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but just getting our, our people worshiping together and loving right. one another. Uh, and w we realize that this, this message is so important mm -hmm. uh, to a world that's divided by hate. Right. Uh, and and as we'd shared earlier, divided on Sunday morning when people go to uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know their church services. Right. Uh, that Dr. we Kennedy, wanted. To, Dr. It was a Dr. King that said the most divided moment in America is Sunday yeah, morning. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, segregated hour. hour. Se segregated yes. hour. Yes. Is Sunday morning, which means that's a that's a that's a that's a rebuke to us, the church, right? It is. It really is. And we want we wanted to do something and have that vision to be a part of something that would change that. Right. Uh, my son, who is the youth pastor at the church that I'm serving now, my worship leader as well, oh, uh, is 20. Yes, it is that, yeah. to have oh. him in ministry, 20 years old. Mm. And uh, I, I'm excited that now he can be a part of something that can mold and shape and change his generation. Yes. And that he has now he has a message that he can go out and mm. share with his friends mm. right. and saying, listen, the, the, the church is coming together, right. and the church is wanting to make a difference in our world. And so I, I want to be a part of that vision. I want to be a part of of what I know God is going to, to use. You know, we've had one great revival in the Brownsville area oh, yeah. already. Yes. And, and I believe that this can have that impact, not just in the Pensacola area, but worldwide, yeah. uh, as people can see that uh, men and women of God coming together around one central message and that's Jesus. So it's so awesome. Thank you, Pastor. You think yeah. about it. So many people are wondering how they can please God. Right. You know, how can I please God? Do I need to sing more? Do I need to preach more? Do I need to teach more? Do I need to, you know, whatever more? Sure. And the truth is, he says in Psalms 133, you want to please me? Mm -hmm. Eat together, hang out together, all you guys join together. And he says, this is the place of the commanded right. blessing. Yeah. It's, a comm it's like God doesn't say, well, maybe he goes, yeah. I'm going to move now because I have to move because I'm a God of my word. And that unity comes in, it's like the place, it's the commanded blessing when we come together you, in unity. The strategy, yeah. the inspiration for the strategy of the mm -hmm. unity movement was Dr. Billy Graham's crusades. Oh, yeah. What came to my mind was that with Billy Graham, you had at his crusades, every denomination, every mm -hmm. race, culture would gather, leave their differences politically mm -hmm. and theologically beyond the gospel at the door. Yeah. And when they came together, it was just the gospel. He stayed in one lane, yes. in one lane only. Mm -hmm. Never got out of that lane. That's why Billy Graham had such a massive universal yeah. impact. So I, I thought about that. I said the same way, if that, was, if that strategy was taken to the local neighborhood and we could talk to pastors and say, listen, we know we have differences theologically. Right. Mm -hmm. We know we uh, have difference in methodology, mm -hmm. but we all believe the gospel. Right. At our gathering meetings and at the marches, we're just going to lift up Jesus right. and the saving message yes. of the gospel to the community. Uh, we thought, let's do a march. Everybody's marching against something. Let's right. march for something. Yes. Right. We did it. 2017, huge turnout. Uh, people came you know, from all seven different denominations, mm -hmm. all the racial cultural groups of our very diverse area of yeah. Myrtle Grove and Warrington, marched a quarter of a mile from the Methodist Church mm -hmm. to Escambia High School. Mm. I mean, it was a phenomenal event. And then at the rally, it was amazing as you looked in the bleachers of the football stadium. Well, the importance of Escambia High School was... The very site yes. of the worst racial riots. Yes, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. I'm looking out, seeing people with expressions <clears throat> of joy, of different... In fact, James Moe looked out and said, wow, he said, this is like heaven's going to be. Yes, it is. Every and, tribe, every nation, yeah. every tongue. So we're going to do it again. This time, I, I believe we're going to see hundreds more yes. new churches that are buying into this, that are coming into it, with a vision down the road <clears throat> of taking this to downtown right. Pensacola, mm -hmm. uh, right down Palafox with a huge rally citywide right, right. Is, is what I, I envisioned for 2020. Well, I know. I want to I say this, that you know when you first called me up about 
about what you're doing and about you know talking to our audiences out here. We have a wonderful audience actually all around the world. But uh, the Lord speaks to me in dreams and visions and that type of thing. And that um, that's the end time language, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, as soon as you, you spoke to me, the Lord that night or that week gave me a dream. And in this dream, he showed me, showed me you standing and at, um, you're, for, you're presently the pastor of Margo Baptist Church, but you're Transition. transitioning into in a few months. In a few yeah. months. Yeah. After 22 years there. After 22 years there. And yeah. so... But uh, you were standing there, and I was standing there, and um, the whole uh, the the whole setup, the people that were there, wasn't just Myrtle Grove Baptist. It was like a diversity, right. all in all in the audience. And so, you know, like you always do, you know, you said, "Well, let's pray. Let's pray first. And so you and I walked over to the right stage, right, and we faced the wall. You were facing the wall, and I was facing the wall, and you began to pray. And as you began to pray, like you do. The glory of God just filled that place. Amen. It just the glory of God just filled. I mean, there was no hype. There's no all that stuff people do. You just turn to God and you begin to talk to Him about what's going on, and you're inviting Him, and the glory filled the place. Yes. That's all cool. And people throughout the crowd. It wasn't everybody in the crowd that got touched, but all throughout that crowd, there was mm-hmm. people that got touched by the glory of God. And I really believe that when you step out and you boldly speak this in the name of Jesus, don't worry about everybody joining you. Right. Those are people that God has laid on, on he's going to touch their hearts. Yeah. And they're going to be bold. They understand what God's doing in this day. And, and it's real strange when you think about it, because how could people be all together, but only, right. only you know, every fifth, third, fourth, what person is being touched sure. by, by God's glory. But it's a call in their life. And so the Lord showed me very specifically that he's called you to do this. He's anointed you to do this. You. And that when you right. pray, because it's when you pray, you're inviting the Holy Spirit to come in, because the Holy Spirit one does the work. He'll come in there, and he's gonna. This is him. This is him, and he's using you to be able to do that. And he wants to bring. He wants his glory to show up. Because when the glory shows up, that's when the nations come. And everybody wants God. They don't want religion. They want him. Greg, if I can say one Mm -hmm. one more thing that's so important right now, culturally, nationally, identity politics politics Mm -hmm. is seeking to divide. Right. Even to to divide white evangelicals from black. You know, you hear the whole narrative. I believe this is a uh, culturally. Mm-hmm. That the time is right right now mm-hmm. for this to step into that void mm-hmm. and give us back, give the Christian community of all of its different denominational stripes a prophetic voice to speak to the generation right now about the power of the gospel, leaving all other issues at the door, politics at the door, right. the gospel only, focusing on the power of God to bring us together across racial, cultural, even political lines. Right. You know, by keeping it focused on the gospel, mm-hmm. it, it keeps away all the distractions right. that radical individuals right. on either extreme right. seek to, to use to pull us apart right. and away from each other. Keeping it like Billy Graham did, mm-hmm. one lane, one gospel, right. one power. One Lord, yeah, one yeah. spirit. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is why I, my vision is I can see a movement in neighborhoods just like right, Myrtle Grove, Warrington, mm-hmm. or downtown, uh, happening across the board, right. across Florida. Mm-hmm. In fact, Mike Hill yes. uh, from State, for, State our, Representative State for Florida. Yeah, Mike said at a political meeting mm-hmm. that God gave him a vision. He spoke to it at a political rally. Right. said, I, I envision that from Pensacola will come a movement that will have a rippling effect mm-hmm. and touch literally the state and the nation, bringing them back to God again. That's Mike, awesome. when he heard about this, said, this must have been it. Yeah, what sure. God was was showing. Awesome, me. awesome. Well, we're coming to an end here. I want you to, I want you to look at the camera and and don't just make this about this moment. Uh, pastors are going to see this all around the world, and you know what it's like. It's like to be a pastor. You're like always con- trying to catch your breath, bring your head up, and just survive the moment, right? Every week, but he'll find and she'll they'll find you know God in this if they step outside their walls. So look at the camera and talk to him right now. He's he's overwhelmed. He's mentally drained. He forgot why he got in the ministry, right. but this is why he got in the ministry. Right. And, uh, and this is what will fire up his people for God. So look at him right now. Talk to him. He's like he's depressed. He's right. pressured. He's got, marriages are struggling. But what we need is more God. So right. you got one minute. So if you could just talk to him right now. Right here? I right there. Right here. Okay. Yeah, talk to the, the camera. Um, I think one of the most significant things that I could say is um, nothing can replace <clears throat> prayer and fasting. To seek the Lord uh, in a period of time where you can fast and pray and uh, draw a, uh, one good thing to do is to draw a circle or an imaginary circle on your carpet or your prayer room. Get in the middle of that circle and say, Lord, do something so significant in my life. Lord, uh, 
I pray, Father, that I prayerfully will not move out of the circle until, Lord, your spirit speaks to my heart about what your will, Amen. your perfect will is for my life, what you want me to do. This is something very similar that happened with me at a very uh, important moment uh, several years ago. And I had no clue that the God was going to do this. I had no clue that he was going to put me in the middle of something at my age. I'll be 68 this year. Young. Yeah, and I, I'm transitioning after 38 years in the pastorate to a brand new ministry. I'm telling you, the Lord has got a purpose for us to the day we draw our last breath on this planet that we can be vitally used by God. There is a reason that we rise up in the morning. That's to give Him glory. Well, I'm so excited. This has been an awesome moment. You know, it's just exciting to have pastors on fire for God's great wisdom. I want to close you out in prayer right now. Yeah. Father God, we just pray that you would touch our mm -hmm. audience. Father God, you would encourage them. This is a pastor moment. You know, there's shepherds out there that need this, need this encouragement. And these pastors are showing you what will encourage you is get into the things of God and the love of God. And Lord, dear God, we ask you right mm -hmm. now, end abortion, sin revival, send a third great awakening in Amen. Jesus' name. And don't forget how easy it is. How easy is it? Loving God, loving others, and Amen. leading others to the same. God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.